and usually they control how it happens. Sorry, I have to say more about that. It's a little bit more complex than uh, developmental change. It requires more significant shifts and to the environmental forces of marketplace. And it's replacing something that's really, it's entirely different. And usually the leaders are the ones that recognize the existing problem. And do you want me to draw that? Well, that would be good, but before she goes on, so I think there's an important step here between developmental and transitional. Developmental is improving what is, okay? And what you just said was the important part of that. Whereas transitional change replaces what is with something entirely different. So we're gonna radically transform or transition from one thing to another. So yeah, give us a diagram of what transitional change looks like. Can I erase this one? Of course, you can do whatever you want. You're in charge. I told you you're not allowed to erase it. <laughs> That's transitional. Anybody think of an example where this happened in an organization? Military. Okay, what, give us a good example. No. Um, when we were changing, well, in the Navy anyway, we was changing uniforms, well, bringing out the new uniforms. So where um, they had the, the guys in boot camp where, you know, they, they, they got it first, and then, then the, the fleet got it. So where, you know, it was, it was, and it was over a period of time. What you know, was the problem? Well, they, they were phasing it. Well, actually, they were phasing out two two of our uniforms. Our, but why? Our what, what were they trying to fix? Um, I would actually say that, that that's probably a hybrid between developmental and transitional, even though it's close. I mean, it kind of fades into both. They might have just been improving the uniform delivery system. They might have been doing something. No, the two different uniforms. The, they were phasing right. out two okay. different uniforms. Okay. So they, they they were they were bringing in the new uniform for um well they they they, they discontinued the old uniform first mm -hmm. and then then they slowly started bringing in the new uniform. Okay, so they transitioned from one to another. Yes. Anybody else got another example? I can think of Kevin. You ever change stuff at work? Did this stop doing it something one way and go to a different way? I, mean, I know from the military, they, when they did, uh, they didn't completely change it, but they, well actually they did change it, uh, food services, it was spraying by civilians. Okay, so transition city. from military personnel right. doing the food right. so they still into have civilians. Them, civilians are, okay, are, that's a perfect example of transitional change. So they're going to fix a problem. We need more soldiers being soldiers, not being cooks, potentially. Uh, let's design against criteria. We only want to have one-tenth of the people in the kitchen that we used to have. Uh, focus on change to redesign the strategy, structural system. Okay, so we're going to shift these people over, retrain them, and get them into the actual fighting units or whatever it is. Um, and then it happens upon a timeline, so we're going to phase out. First, what we're going to do is not recruit anybody else into the kitchen. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly transition and train these people to move through. So they go through the state. So a lot of corporate restructures uh, can be considered transitional. Or for instance, we just started here this month, we no longer use paper for admissions. Okay, so you know how you just saw, sign an enrollment agreement? That's gone. 
Now what they have is we have a whole new computer system called DocuSign that has all the paperwork in it. You have a unique login. You're the only person in the world that can log into it. You go in there and you can digitally sign the stuff and then it gets put in the repository. And so we're slowly but surely transitioning from paper-based into digital-based. It's a transition, you're trying to fix a problem, get rid of paper, design a criteria, it has to be legal, uh, you know, it has to be able to be available, it has to be secure. We have lots of laws enabled, FERPA, stuff like that. So how are we gonna design that structure? They had our online college start with it first, then they had a Salt Lake campus do with it. Now we're rolling out to us, structured rollout. So those are great examples. So good, I like that. And the third one is transformational change. And it's usually more complex than the other two. And it's more, it's more radical when the shift, for the shift. usually it requires the mindset to, to implement successfully and it, sometimes it has to do with more of a personal change for, that can happen so for that it's survival change or die or breakthrough is needed to pursue the new opportunities and it is not initially known it emerges or it is created through trial and error continues strategy stru structure, system, process, technology, work, culture, behavioral, and mindset. And it's designed to facilitate high involvement emergent process. And it's usually with, with Transformational, you're going into the unknown, and not a, lot, not, not a lot of people know where you're going with it, and it makes them uncomfortable. And they don't know in advance what's coming up for them. So it's like a, a lot of work is required because they don't have like a straight point to go to. It's kind of like, it's not a straight line. It's like a, there's bumps on the way, but they don't know. So do you want to? But do you want to draw that? Yeah, this one's yeah. a little chaotic. I'm trying to do it fast. That's all right. You don't have to raise that one. You can put it up next to it. Okay, when you think of transformational, where an organization was going to die if they didn't change, they had to do something totally unknown. It's usually very dramatic. Perfect. That's a great analogy. So what did the music business go through? Wait, transition to like the MP3 digital downloads. Didn't just have to transition. They had to transform. Right. Why did they have to transform? Because all their music was getting stolen. Yeah, technology and all music just Napster came out. People are just stealing music all of a sudden. People still have Samsung phones. Don't even care. They still steal music. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, no, but as they as that happened, all of a sudden. What was the model for selling music before? Uh, CDs, CDs, like things. Uh, albums. Yeah, physical. Yeah. Albums. Physical. You had to buy a whole album. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, record sales start declining. They start going down. And what happens? You get people trying to come up and say, hey, we should do this, we should do that. They're all digital, but they're still selling in albums. And I don't want to bring up Apple, but Apple came in, Steve Jobs said, <laughs> every track's going to cost 99 cents. And the record labels at first were like, no, we don't want to do that. That's that's not right. We make money, you know, three good songs and we sell twelve. <laughs> you know, like that's how it was. And he said, I don't care which songs are good or bad. I think it should be ninety nine cents each. That's what we'll sell for our digital store. And all of a sudden, record sales start going back up because people have openness. Now we're in a transformation again right now. In music. What's going on with music now? What's the big transformation in music right now? Streaming. You don't even buy music anymore. What do you do? Well, YouTube, but like what they're trying to get you to do is pay 10 bucks a month. And you can have anything. You get anything you want for 10 bucks a month, but you just gotta pay 10 bucks a month, you can have any music. It's a transformation where that industry is trying to figure out like which way is right. Should we have ads? Should we not have ads? Should we, you know, let Apple do it? Should we let Spotify do it? Should we let uh, Pandora do it? They're all over the place and they're trying to come up with a spot where they can then go back up. 
because they wrote that successful plateau. So music's a great one. Any, any other ones that we've thought about? I, I can see one right now that just started happening. T. Oh, that media right now, right, right now we're all, we all have to go home and watch TV. Like, forget that, we have to watch on their schedule. And Netflix and Hulu have started introducing binge watching. You guys know what binge watching yeah. is, right? Where you're like, I wanna see a whole season in two days. I wanna watch all of them. So what says that we have to wait, a, you know, four months for all the shows to come out? Netflix now creates a season and they release the whole season all at once. And you can go watch all the episodes. And we're starting to see, what? Wow. Yeah. No, it's it's kind of, but it's different. You know, like it's they had this successful plateau for a long time. We we draw people in, we make them wait for it every week. They come back, we have advertisers, haha. And all of a sudden, people are like, I don't want that. I'm gonna go on YouTube and watch them. We start seeing these this decline, and all of a sudden, they have to figure out how are we gonna course correct, how are we gonna do it. We need to transform completely unknown. We don't know how it's gonna end up, but we need to change what we're doing, or it's gonna go away. I think cable companies in general right now are trying to figure out how are they going to become, they call them dumb pipes. We don't care about the cable company anymore. We just want the internet because <laughs> we're going to go out and get whatever we want on the internet. And so they're trying to, they're going through this transformational change right now. We can watch that in real time as, have you guys, anybody have Cox? Or you guys see the commercials for Gigablast? Where the kids eating the printed food? What am I going to do with Gigablast? And you know, they're, they're saying, hey, we have really fast internet. Come to us. They're trying to figure out how are we going to entice people to stay with us. So, good. I like that. In fact, that's down on the commercials, too. And what? Uh, what you were saying about uh, Netflix going to... Uh... Does Netflix care if we have commercials on their shows? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, well, Why don't they care? They are monthly. We're yeah. paying a monthly yeah. fee to them. Yeah. That's all they care about. Hey, if I if they can come out with good shows and more people subscribe, they're making eight bucks a month on everybody in the planet. Yeah, no, what I'm saying is Netflix makes us happy. We don't have to watch commercials, and that means businesses have to find another way to advertise. So, perfect example of that is the new Apple TV. It's the first one that they haven't stopped where you can say skip forward five minutes, and it just automatically skips forward. So you can just jump. So even if you're watching something, you're like, skip forward five minutes, it jumps. So you can skip through all the commercials. Like, so are commercials even going to be effective anymore? Uh, an interesting, another one yesterday, and I think only, you're the only one with an iPhone? Yes. But yesterday they introduced iOS 9, new operating system. It blocks ads on websites. So now, because ads take so long to load up, but that's how all these blogs and all these websites pay for themselves is through all this advertising. Well, Apple's like, it's a crappy experience. Our people don't want that. If they want to block your content, they can block ads. Because the way it goes out, it goes to like different places and brings in the ads. So today, I fired up my phone, I'm looking through, and all my websites are there, and I just have all the articles I want to read, but there's none of those little ads in the middle. It's just blank white space. It's just, that's oh, my. oh, that's what? Yeah, that's what happened. Oh, and so all of a sudden you've got this, and it's like, wow, this is cool. I thought that, and your pages yeah. load faster. They did. And now all of a sudden all these blogs are going, uh oh, how are we going to create content? They're going to go through transform, or how are we going to create revenue? Transformational change. They're going to have to figure out a radically new way to design that. So anyway, don't mean to stop, but there's so many good topics about transformational change. And that was the last change for the article. Oh, I was supposed to. That was it. That's it? Well, can we talk about a couple things? Okay. On developmental change, um, individuals, groups, and the whole organization, and the primary type of change is inherent upon improving processes. So that first one, we're trying to improve processes. But the things that come up that are conflicting are like roles. Like let's say we want to improve something and it means that Michael Tuck used to be a boss, but now he's going to be a co-equal. Like he's going to come down. Or we're gonna, you remember yesterday we were talking about merging the two vice president's departments yeah. and one's not gonna be a vice president anymore? Well, that might be the right thing for your organization, but you think one of those vice presidents isn't gonna fight for that job tooth and nail to keep it still in the same structure? Mm -hmm. So you have to come up with the, the com it's a complex roadmap, but it's simple because it's just a linear path and we're trying to increase, but it's not necessarily transitional. Well, you know what, I would say reorganization is transitional. I would actually take that out. If you're gonna reorg something, you're, you're radically changing it, so you're going from the old state to the new state, so it's not necessarily um, that. But developmental change, you can bring apart the, about those through surveys, through 
group talks, through town meetings, you know, they call those town halls where they get together. I'm sure you were involved in much stuff like that where people would get together and talk about what needs to happen to make the organization better. And um, those are those are interesting changes, but these are the three uh, major concepts. Now, the third one is the one that everybody talks about is transformational change, because it's the one that we see that for so long, people get on a successful plateau and they don't foresee their own too. They think, oh, it's all gonna be perfect bro. And I don't have to change because we're successful right now. And that's the fallacy that happens and there are hundreds and thousands of companies we've seen that were hugely successful and all of a sudden are no longer even relevant or existent anymore because they didn't see something coming like Blackberry. Anybody have a Blackberry in here? Yeah. I mean, seven years ago, everybody had a Blackberry. Blackberry Pearl. Yeah, nobody carries a Blackberry anymore because they were at that successful plateau. They literally thought, oh, no one's ever going to not use us. We're business. People that were serious about phones are going to use a Blackberry. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, we need a new operating system. Oh, no. And it's just cratering, and they're trying to re emerge as something important, but they've already lost so much ground, and they're going to be able to make that back up. So with transformational change, the hard part as a leader in an, in an organization is to let go of what's successful in order to go to what will be successful. Uh, Gretzky, Wade Gretzky famously says, I don't escape the puck, I escape where the puck will be, or is going to be, I think what it is. And you, you have to think, where is this organization need to be? So we were talking about iPads the other day. Remember when I was asking everybody about the iPads? Is it good, is it bad right now? I don't know, but I'm trying to come up with where are we? Where do we need to be? Not where should we be right this second, but where do we need to be in order to have a better education? Um, those are all things that are hard because right now it's like, oh, we're bringing some laptops, it's happy, everybody's happy, good. But if we wait till it's too late to make the change, all of a sudden it's like, things start going down. Um, and it's always scary. Transformational change is never something, because what was the key characteristic? It's unknown. Yeah, it's unknown. So, <clears throat> any questions for Andrea? That was a tough one. It was a good article. Lots of good stuff. Bravo. Okay.